Hey guys, welcome back to Red Bandit Racing. Today we got the Mini E Revo with us, AKA Merv. It's got some clicking going on, and this started when we were doing our RC Clash, and it's only under 3S. So I kind of know what the issue is, but I kind of want to take it apart and find out what it is. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and play a clip for you guys so you guys can hear it. Under 2S, it wasn't that big of a deal. Once we fire this thing up under 3S, it starts clicking a lot in the back. It almost sounds like a spur gear, but I think it's the rear diff. The Merv does have an issue with the rear diff because the housing kind of closes like this and under 3S power, uh, this back skid plate right here, which also keeps that diff together because it's two halves, it, it starts to separate under a high torque. And I think what's going on is the pinion in there is stripping out the ring gear. So we're gonna take it apart, kind of see what's going on with this. This has kind of been a headache uh, the last couple times we ran it because we've been going through center center drive shafts. I think we got that finally fixed now, but we got to figure out what else is going on with this. So let's kind of jump into it and take it apart. All right. So first thing I want to do is let's go ahead and pop off this cover right here. We can check it out. Yeah. See, I don't see I don't see a problem. So. It still has good lash so let's just jump into it let's let's just kind of take this apart so we can uh see what's going on let's go ahead and pull the motor out this car is uh not that bad to work on it's just small and it does not help that uh we got the the led light kit on there because now it's just more stuff to take off so uh i'm just gonna undo the motor Go. All right, so we're gonna have to take the back wing off, which means I'm gonna have to clip some of these zip ties. So we'll get these zip ties out of the way. And these skid plates are banged up. All right, go peel that off. All right, so pull those off. Pull it off like that. I'm gonna undo these two so I can separate the whole backing on this. Oops. I think I've only had to take this apart twice. No. So now let's take this bottom plate off. All right, so I'm gonna flip it back over, and I think you have to take these two out because I think these go all the way through the bottom. Oops, there we go. Take those out. Yeah, they are. So we're gonna take these two. That should separate it. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna take this. I'm going to put this aside. This is kind of what we're focusing on. I want to separate this housing because I want to see what this looks like inside. This cover right here goes on like that. And this plastic right here is supposed to hold these pins to keep this from spreading. Well, the problem is the plastic is letting it spread. So the diff housing under power is going like this. And I think that's what's causing the clicking. So the only way to confirm that is let's take it apart and see if there's damage. There we go. Man, that pin was in there. I'm gonna have to make sure that was not bent. All right, let's take the top one out. These are all little pins. These are all in there tight. Put the axles out. that pop those out so we put those two halves aside all right here we go and there's the damage i don't even have to open it but i mean i guess i'll open it for you guys <laughs> so but i i see the damage right there So 
that's exactly what I thought it was. So I know it's hard to see, but you see as I'm going, some of those teeth are gone. That was kind of hard to see. We'll zoom in for you, but some of those teeth are gone. See right there? And then they get bigger right there. Oh, couldn't spin it right there. And they go down. I remember seeing someone work on one of these before and it was actually outsourced RC. I believe that's his name. Uh, I'll put the correct title down below. Uh, I saw that video probably over a year ago and I don't know how I remembered it. Maybe it just clicked after I started hearing the noise because that's the same problem he had. So we're gonna have to order parts for this, but the in initial fix for this is you're gonna replace the pinion, you're gonna replace the diff assembly, you're gonna replace, you're gonna add shims on both sides of the diff that go on here. That way, when you put this in like that, I don't know if there is a lot of play. There's not too much play, but it keeps the diff from going side to side. It keeps it steady. The big thing though is going to be these skid plates. So we actually are going to replace these plastic skid plates with aluminum. What it's going to do, it's actually going to go right here and it's going to keep this from spreading because the aluminum won't spread. And that's going to make it a lot tougher. Not just that, but having aluminum skid plates is just going to make it even stronger. So I think that's what's going to fix the whole problem. The Merv is a great little car, but the Merv needs a lot of little upgrades to keep going. And oh, the one other thing that we're going to have to do once we get this all fixed up and ready to go is we have to take the slipper clutch out we have to take the slipper clutch out and put a center diff now the center diff goes right here in the transmission it's still going to have the spring and the nut and the pad but it's that's not going to do anything anymore so the nuts just there to hold the spur gear on and you you know you tighten it up normally and then you back it off have it turn to return but that center diff, what that's gonna do, it's that's gonna that's gonna help the power between the front and rear wheels so it can handle that 3S a little bit better. So it is kind of a big fix to replace the diff, the pinion, add the shims, replace both skid plates, and replace the diff. I mean you're probably talking about about a hundred, hundred and ten dollars. So it's something we're gonna have to do though, because there's no other way to really fix this problem. We're gonna order them and then we're gonna go ahead and continue this video. That way we can test it out, run it, and see how it does. So we'll see you soon. All right, so it took a little longer than expected to get some parts, but we did get them in. Some of them went on back order and it took a couple extra weeks to get them. And then I had to find time to make this video uh, with all the other videos that we were doing. And if everything sounds much clearer, it's because we got new mics. Uh, I'll leave a link down below so you guys can check it out. But it's Hollyland, and these are actually pretty nice. It's got noise cancellation, and it comes with a dead cat. And this one actually comes with two mics and the receiver. So it actually works pretty well. It's been doing really great. So I hope everything sounds much better. Let's check out the parts that we got. So here we got the center diff. The center diff, this is going to be part number 7014. So we're going to be putting this in. This should help uh, eliminate uh, some of the issues with the power transfer because the diff that's in there right now is solid. And I'll show you that when I take it out. And what this is going to do, this is going to help uh, transfer the power more equally back and forth. So there's really going to be no need for the slipper clutch anymore. Uh, the fluid in this, we're going to fill up to about 50,000 weight. Uh, I'm not sure how much is actually in it from the factory, so we're going to pull it apart and just make sure it's topped off. Okay, here we got the actual the ring and differential. This is part number 7079. Now, I did also get the differential assembly. Now, the reason why I had to get both is because Traxxas doesn't sell just the pinion. So, I actually had to buy the ring gear and pinion and the complete differential. So, I got those. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the differential assembly part and make sure it's topped off. This one's 30,000 weight. Now, if you're servicing the front, the front's going to be 50K. So the rear is going to be 30K. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And we also got some skid plates by GPM. Here you have the front skid plate. And here you have the rear. And when I take these out, I'll go ahead and show you why we're actually using these. All the parts will be in the description, but the front skid plate is ERV331F-R. And for the rear, it's going to be ERV331R-R. So I got the red. I know some people actually use the blue, but I thought she would like the red a little bit more. If they had purple, I would have got her purple. 
And last, from CRC, we do have some shims. And you're gonna wanna use these shims, part number 4738 by CRC. Oh, they're all hiding, there we go. They're really thin shims, and we're gonna put these on both sides of the differential, and that's gonna take up some of the slop from the back and forth movement so it doesn't uh, end up damaging the pinion. So let's go ahead and jump right back into this repair. I'm gonna show you guys how to put all this stuff on, but I'm not gonna show you guys the full reassembly because I've already, I've already done it twice for you guys. Uh, just go ahead and watch the beginning on how I took it off, but I will show you the main parts. All right guys, so as you can see, uh, I had to move outside. Uh, I got a really bad camera angle the first time I was putting this back together. And after reviewing the video, there's no way I could have uploaded this for you guys. I wanted to make sure that you guys saw everything. And during the video, I think I was rebuilding it like out here and I didn't realize it wasn't in frame. So I wanted to redo it. Uh, hopefully these mics sound a lot better considering there's a lot of wind. And as you're gonna see, there's gonna be leaves hitting the table because it's, it's getting really windy. But I wanted to redo this part because I wanted to make sure you guys understood what was going on and what we did. And I'm actually gonna do something a little bit different uh, this time around. I'm actually gonna replace the rear dip housing. And the reason why I'm replacing the rear dip housing uh, it's very simple. The, the back screws that I believe are up to, uh, right here, the ones that go on the side. Uh, hold on. Yeah, the ones that go on the back actually hold on uh, the back link for the, one of the arms right here. And the housing's stripped, so I can't get those screws tight. So. I'm going to go ahead and replace the housing because it does come with brand new screws. So that's why I'm going to do that. Uh, it's always a good idea to use the screws that it came with. Don't use anything that's too long because if you use screws that are too long, uh, the screw actually goes through the housing if you put too long the screw in and it'll actually touch the, uh, the differential. And you probably can't see it from here, but it'll actually touch the differential and stop it from moving. So let me get this apart and I'll show you because I know what happened on this one. I think the wrong screw was put in the first time it was uh, taken apart. But let's see if we can actually see it in this one. And then we'll go ahead and continue with the video. Yep, you can see it right there. So I'll try and zoom in for you, but you see this hole right here? Right there that's that back screw that goes through that hole you can actually see it right there so if you put too long of a screw in it's actually going to touch that diff and that's also going to cause you some additional problems so make sure you guys use the right size screw if the hole is stripped uh, what you can do is put a little uh, super glue on there and then run the screw in it should hold if that doesn't work what you could do and it's a nice little trick get the original screw and go one size up and put a bunch of uh, a lip balm on it, you know, chapstick, lip balm on the threads to lubricate the threads a little bit and then slowly run the new thread in. It'll actually uh, self tap through the plastic and you can use a bigger screw. Just make sure that it fits in the eyelet of the link that you're putting it through because the bigger screws may not fit. So I'm just gonna replace the housing since I'm redoing this video. All right, so let's start with the rear diff. Let's go ahead and take this off because I already, you know, I already re-greased everything. But I'm going to go ahead and take it back off. We'll go ahead and get this housing out of the way because we no longer need this one. And if you guys are wondering what part number that is, that is going to part number 7029X. What I really like is it comes with all the screws, which a lot of these housings, you'll notice, don't come with new screws. I already got this rear end greased up and got this all put back together. For the rear end, you're going to want to take it apart and separate the screws really carefully and make sure this is properly filled. When I took this apart, and I'll put up a little clip, it was almost completely empty. So I went ahead and topped it off with 30,000 weight. So when you wanna go ahead and do that to make sure you have the proper amount of lubrication in there. Now I'm gonna take this bearing off, and this is where I inserted that shim. The shim that goes right here. You can see it right there. You're gonna to wanna to put that shim right there, and then go ahead and put the bearing on. Oops. Put the bearing on, and you wanna do the same thing to the other side. Now what that's gonna do is that's gonna free up the play. Let's go ahead and put this in. I get everything re-greased, got my bearings put back on. I always forget which side the differential goes on. Uh, so I try and lay it out as I took it off. Put 
this one in. Actually, you know what? Put this one in just on, just so I can show you. All right. All right, so we got that in. Now, what you're gonna wanna do is hold this nice and tight and then take that diff and push it side to side this way. Because what you're doing is you're seeing if there's any play. If you have play in there, that's why you wanna use the shims. Uh, I didn't feel a whole lot of play, but I decided to go ahead and use the shims anyways because it's not gonna hurt anything. So now, obviously, if you wanna go ahead and pinch this shut, just like that, pinch that shut, Make sure everything moves, make sure nothing's loose. Replace that center diff if you guys are having the same problem and all your gears are chipped off. Replace those. You wanna put new shims in, make sure your bearings are okay. If those bearings are worn out, replace them. Uh, make sure you put a good amount of grease on there. I use marine grease just in case uh, moisture gets in there. So use a little bit of, uh, use a little bit of grease and you should be go good to go as far as the rear diff goes. So now let's go ahead and go to the transmission and then once we're done with this, I'll go ahead and reassemble. So for this, let's go ahead and take off, let's go ahead and take off the spur gear and the slipper clutch. All right, put that right there. Put that right there, everything looks, still looks good on this. I usually try and keep everything in order. Let's go ahead and take these guys off. them off and I just keep them like that just so I know where they go All right now let's take this pin out now we got to take these other two out kind of push everything down as you're separating the housing just so uh, you're not pulling everything out See, I kept all the bearings in there. You don't have to worry. Um, I already took this apart. There are no shims that you have to worry about. Just make sure your bearings are in there properly. All right, and then right here. Actually, you know what? Let me take this bottom one out just so I can take this out and show you. I'm going to take this drive cup off. All right, I'm going to carefully take that guy out. It is gonna come out the bearing. We'll leave that right there. Make sure you put that back on. Just remember the, the orientation that you guys take the, uh, this stuff out. The diff is gonna go with that blue, see, see that blue seal and the, this top end's kind of rounded. You're gonna put that facing upwards when you go in like this. So it's gonna go in just like this. So this is the rear center diff that you put in. As you can see, uh, let me put these just so you can get a, oops, just so you can get a visual. you can turn it. Uh, this I believe has 50,000 weight in it. You're gonna wanna go ahead and take this apart, take these screws out and carefully pull the cap off. Don't tear the seal, pull that apart and make sure it's topped off with, I think it's 50,000 weight. 50,000 weight's what I put in. It's not a whole lot, but it's good enough, especially for something of this scale. It's not that big. So, but yeah, this is, uh, this is the center diff, so it does have some good play. Now, if you go ahead and go over Let's go and pop this in just so I know where it goes. Make sure that bearing's on. All right. Now this is the stock one. This is a solid gear. So if I were to put these picks in here, like this, you can't turn it. It's a, it's a solid gear. And what this car relies on is this slipper clutch. And what, what we're doing here is we're letting it we're putting in a center diff in so it properly distributes the power from the front and rear so it doesn't put so much shock on the drivetrain especially if you, this isn't adjusted correctly if this isn't adjusted correctly uh, this can cause additional problems broken axles maybe you're doing too many wheelies or maybe it's slipping too much and if it slips too much you can burn out the pads and you can kind of wear out the disc so this this is a must upgrade. If you guys have not done this, you need to go do this. This is a big upgrade that you guys are gonna to wanna to do. So let's go and put this back aside. 
We're going to make sure this is in here and I'm going to put it back together for you real quick. So that's in there. I'm going to take our housing. Like I said, there's no shims. So we're going to line that back up. Just like that. Pops right in. Let's go ahead and tighten everything up. Yeah, but when I uh, when I did this center diff and I took it apart, it was completely empty. There was no fluid in it. It was it was almost dry. So I've said it many times on this channel. If you guys just bought an RC car, pull your diffs apart. Pull them apart. Make sure they're lubricated before you go out and drive your car. Uh, it's going to make your car last not only longer, but it's going to help. It's going it's going to make your car handle better too. I'm just amazed that you can buy a brand new part from Traxxas and it's completely dry. And I'm pretty sure they're not expecting you to pull it apart. They're just expecting you to buy it and throw it in. So it's a good practice anytime you get a new RC car. Go ahead and pull it apart and check all your fluids. All right, so now we've got that back together. Now let's go ahead and throw this pin in. Sometimes it's easier to put this pin in before you put this plate on, but you can still get it in there. Takes a little bit of practice and some steady hands. Then we're gonna go put our disc back on. Just like that. Now we're gonna put our spur gear back on, make sure the bearings are in there properly. Now, because we've got that new center diff in there, uh, it kind of it kind of eliminates the slipper clutch, but you still have to put it back on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten this down all the way and then just loosen it maybe half a turn. Because right now, all it's really there for is uh, to hold your spur gear on. So we're going to make sure it's all the way tight like that. And I'm going to go half a turn back. That's it. Make sure everything's nice and straight. Make sure everything's nice and smooth. That's that's the main part of this video is showing you guys how to take some of that gap out of the rear diff, all that side play. And we're putting a new center diff in and I'm gonna put this all together and I'm gonna show you guys the skid plates. Cause the skid plates are the only thing that's gonna keep you guys from doing this over and over again. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna go ahead and reassemble the car real quick because I've already done it a couple times um, in past videos. And if you guys just watched the video in the beginning, it shows me taking apart so you guys know how to put it on. And I'll be right back to show you guys the skid plates. All right, so now that we got everything put back together, uh, the front end's pretty good, back end's good. The only thing I didn't do is the screws that go back here for these back links. Uh, I need to replace these screws, so I'm gonna have to leave this one out for now. So I'm just gonna go pick up some new ones, but we're gonna go ahead and finish this up by putting on the skid plates. So let's go ahead and start it with the front. So here's the new skid plates. Uh, nice piece of aluminum. It's not gonna flex, it's not gonna bend. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna eliminate any kind of flexing from the plastic. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop this on just like that, it goes right in. These are nice and hand tight. These screws don't ever back out, so you don't have to sit there and crank on them. Just make sure they're snug. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put this back skid plate on. And as you can see, see here, it's gonna go on like that. So the front, the front bulkhead right here is gonna be secured right here. And the back pins are gonna sit in those two slots. And when you press that, you're pretty much gonna press it down just like that, make sure it's in there. And it is in there. So that's gonna keep it from flexing at all. So we're not gonna have any more of these issues. And we won't have to take this apart again. And I am just going down enough to where there's tension. And it, it looks like I'm cranking them down, but I'm really not. Right there. I'm telling you, these are not gonna back out. You're not gonna have issues. You can check them after a couple of runs, just to make sure they're not backing out. But this is a pretty small car, they're not gonna back out. All right, so I got those on. Take a look in there. 
Looks like, yep, it is flush. I can see the front right there. I know it's a little hard for you guys to see it, but I can see the sides and that's it. So that right there is gonna keep this from flexing back and forth at all. And it's gonna protect that rear end a little bit better. Yeah, I hope this video helps you guys out and I hope that eliminates the problems. All the parts will be in the description. And if you guys have any questions, please let me know. If I miss something, let me know. Uh, I did go over this car pretty thoroughly. If it wasn't in the video, I assure you that it was done properly. Everything was lubed, everything was topped off. I'll even list the fluids that I use in the description. And that should get you guys going so you don't have any more issues. Uh, I'm glad we finally got this fixed. This car has actually been down for quite a while. So we just haven't had time with the weather and now it's raining. So we're gonna have to start getting into our rain videos now. Uh, it felt like a really short summer. I don't know if it felt that way to you guys, but everything's fixed now, everything's good. We're gonna be going to San Diego soon, and uh, I don't think we're gonna to go to the sand trap like we did last time, we're gonna go somewhere else, but we're gonna have the E-Revo, the mini E-Revo, and we're gonna have the sledge out there, uh, racing up a little bit. We'll find a good area to shoot a video for you guys. But yeah, shoot me down a comment, let me know if this helps you. I know some of you guys were waiting for this video, so I'm sorry it took so long. Uh, thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.